Hello everyone, it's putty time! We're doing a video about the e.l.f. putty products. Specifically, new thing that I got my hands on is the putty color correcting eye brightener. And I'm going to definitely be closely comparing it. I think I'm going to do one eye this and one eye with the Becca and Smashbox under eye brightening corrector. This is a product I love. I really want to closely compare those in this video. But I thought, you know, how can I expand this a little bit more? I thought, let's just incorporate all the putty things. Because at this point, we got putty primer, the putty corrector, putty blush, putty bronzer. We're going to putty it up today. The putty primer that I have, this is actually a mini size that I got with an order not that long ago. And this is the original Poreless Putty Primer from e.l.f. Did I even say this is all from e.l.f.? And for a while, I thought this product was kind of dry. Not this particular one, but the original. And then they came out with the Cookies and Dreams collection, and I thought, well, that's nice and creamy. That's doing a number on the pores, but it's also like really, really smooth. And then when I got this sample set, I was like, oh, they've improved this stuff. They've made everything just as smooth as the Cookies and Dreams. So I am just getting that first and foremost on the pore problem zones, which for me would be the nose and sides of the nose. And then I'm just going to continue spreading it all over the face so I have a nice consistent finish everywhere. Underneath that, I have all my skincare on today and I have as my sunscreen, if I looked a little extra glowy, I'm wearing my Woe Glow. I went ahead and got a full size of this. I have a cute little travel size in my travel bag, which I kind of wanted to keep there. So I thought I'll buy a full size just to have in the makeup room because I really love that product. It is so beautiful and it has the SPF 30. Okay, putty primer is on. I think it's just a matter of time before we have a putty foundation. So then I'm going to stick with e.l.f. and I'm going to use my e.l.f. foundation here. This is the oil-free SPF 15. I think it's called Flawless Finish Foundation um, in the little frosted glass bottle and I have the shade Sand. And I do really like this foundation actually. And I'm going to get a pump of that out. One pump is quite a bit. I'm going to dab it around and then blend it in with my brush. I was definitely like fired up for this video today. I woke up before my alarm went off. I didn't get out of bed yet, but I woke up and I was like, it's the putty video day. And actually, as I was brainstorming this idea, I thought, have I had this idea before and done this video? I had to actually search through my videos to make sure because I thought, I believe I've had this thought before. And I think that was all it was. I just thought about it, but I hadn't actually followed through. See, isn't this a pretty foundation? Um, what would I compare it to? I feel like it's a little lighter coverage than Wet n Wild Photo Focus. Maybe it's reminding me a little bit of Photo Focus Dewy. But I do have that glowy sunscreen on underneath it all. But I feel like the Poreless Putty Primer did a great job around my nose. As I'm going over it, I'm feeling like it looks really smooth and even. The texture of the skin just seems very consistent all over with this on top. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of time before we hear about putty foundation. Now we are going to dive into this putty color correcting eye brightener. And I have this in the shade Fair. So this is like your light kind of pinky toned one. And I'm going to pull up Elf's website so I can tell you exactly what they claim with this one. So this sells for $6 and they say under eye brightener that prime skin for concealer and works to correct the appearance of dark circles. And this comes in six different shades. It claims that across the board these feature color correcting peach hues to reduce the appearance of dark circles. Illuminating pearls brighten your under eyes. So that's really making me think of this one, um, the Becca and Smashbox. Unique putty formula offers medium coverage and effortless blending. It's got squalane, hyaluronic acid, and ginseng root extract. And again, they say it primes and smooths the skin to extend the wear of concealer. So I'm going to put this on one eye and we're going to compare it to the effect of the Becca and Smashbox because if you look at them in their little jars, they really are the same tone. And as I was swatching these on my hand yesterday, I thought, wow, they really do kind of look similar. One thing to note about this e.l.f. putty one, at first when you kind of just graze your finger across the top, you're getting a really thin amount of product. Like it's very thin, it's very light. I'm not saying it doesn't feel creamy, but it's like you're just moistening your finger with product and it doesn't necessarily feel super rich. And the other day when I was using it, I thought I'm going to push into that just a little bit. You know how um, Bobbi Brown talks about her Jones 
road miracle balms and how you're supposed to break the seal or kind of push into it a little bit. So I like just push my finger down to where I can feel things getting even more creamy and then it develops more of a richness I think. It makes itself more similar in consistency to the Becca I think when you do that. So I'm going to take like a little dot of it on my innermost part and then kind of underneath and we'll put another dot right out here at the edge. And again, once you do that, you just get a little more product when you use it. It feels fairly rich and creamy. And I'm just using my ring finger here and I'm dabbing it right into what I lovingly call the cavern, <laughs> that deep part, and over anywhere where I might normally see that darkness. And they don't claim that this is like some full coverage step that's going to actually blank out 100% your darkness, but they claim that it's a medium coverage step that's going to brighten and prep your under eye before the concealer. So what are we looking like now? I think it's definitely brightened. If I compare it to my other eye here, this has nothing on it. This has something on it. From a distance, maybe you can tell even more. I think this looks extremely brightened and it feels kind of hydrated and moisturized. That was a key quality of the Becca that I always noticed. Kind of what I felt allowed it to be that layering step was because it had such a good amount of moisture in it. So when you put that on, you felt like, okay, it's not like I'm gonna layer a concealer over this cakey product. Like it was moisturizing, it was hydrating, and it allowed layering to work. So I'm gonna do some of that. This product has a nice richness to it and I'm going to also apply the same amount a couple of dots there and a little bit at the outer corner clean off my finger then I'm going to dab this in and see what we have you could also use a brush I'm feeling nicely bright now on this side as well I can't get over how the feel is really so similar. As far as this category of product goes, this has always been my number one. This Becca and then, you know, Smashbox kind of took over some key products. Becca and Smashbox under eye brightening corrector. This is the Fair Light shade. And I've always felt like it was something special because it truly did brighten, but it had that moisture element that allowed it to be layered up without looking super cakey. Looking up really close, I feel both under eyes look somewhat dewy and to touch it, you can feel that moisture. You can see that on both sides. If I'm really getting picky about it, I feel like maybe there's a hair more coverage coming through on the Becca. When I check the consistency and really pay attention to the feel of it, I do still think that the Becca is just a little bit richer. Um, but again, I think when you get this, you do want to push into it and create that creaminess for yourself. And it's really close. There is that little more richness that I feel with the Becca. So now let's go on with a concealer because this is being talked about as a primer of sorts, you know, to wear underneath a concealer. I'm going to get my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer and this I wear in the light peach shade and I'm just going to get probably a little bit less. I'm aiming to use a little bit less than I normally do since I've already taken kind of a brightening step in there, but I do have some other areas on my face to conceal. Then I'm going to take my e.l.f. Duo Complexion Brush or Complexion Duo Brush. I always flip those words around. And I'm going to spread that product out a bit and dab it in. We're going to come up here to the under eye. We're going to spread those little dots out as well. Look at that added brightening too. Because this shade is just a little bit brightening for me. A little bit lighter than my skin tone, which I think is always helpful. Okay, smoothing it all around and then dabbing it in. Smooth it and dab it. Worked with some tiny little cheerleaders last night. They are so sweet and cute. Working hard, I mean, two straight hours of practice for a bunch of five and six year olds. Like, they stayed pretty focused. Okay, look at me now. So now we've really brought in that coverage and we're getting the feeling like, yeah, this is looking like a nice, flawless under eye. I still feel quite dewy in that area. I use the hydrating concealer, you know, you're going to have that. I'm blending over, I'm trying to pick up any excess product, but I feel like both eyes definitely have a similar appearance. Um, I can't say one drastically looks like, oh, I can really tell that I corrected with the Becca on this eye. Like, I think they both look really strong. I'm happy to say they both really executed well. And again, this product is available in six different shades. The next shade 
deeper looks like it's got even more peachy richness to it, you know? I'm not sure I've seen a corrector like this, a brightening under eye corrector, come in that many different shades in this format. I'm going to take some of my e.l.f. Halo Glow Setting Powder. This is in the light pink shade. I really like this powder. Um, also like the way they packaged it with the little sliding sifter thing. And I'm going to just tap some into my lid. Pick some up with the triangle puff. And now we're really feeling the flawlessness because we're taking away some of like just the moisture that's catching the light and making things maybe not look quite so even. Now we're in our perfecting phase and I'm gonna hit the T-zone with this also. I'm pleased y'all. I think the under eyes both look really, really fresh and good. Now with powder on top, I still don't feel like I look overly dry. I mean, I know I'm always going to be impressed by the look of hydrating camo concealer, but that brightening corrector did good. And honestly, I didn't use a massive amount of any of the concealer products. It's time to move on with a few more putty steps. So I've got putty bronzers, and then I also have a luminous putty bronzer. Um, I have a couple shades of my putty bronzer. I have uh, honey drip and then I have a much deeper one called Sunkissed. Can you see the difference? No. Sunkissed is real dark. And as I was swatching it the other day, I thought that feels kind of dry. Let's see if we can work with the honey drip. I know I complained at one point in time that this wasn't um, giving enough color to my skin, but this is looking okay. I don't know how I was trying to apply it. I probably got a more subtle effect if I was just going straight in with the brush. And they do have the putty primer applicator, so you could put your primer on with this, or you can use this brush to blend out any of the putty steps. It's doing all right for me. Again, this is a non-shimmery one. This is one of the original putty bronzers. It's soft, but it's doing stiff. You could also use an e.l.f. Duo Complexion brush in this way. That brush is very multitasking. I'm just kind of reserving mine for foundations and concealers, but as far as shape and size goes, it can do this work. Okay, we've got a really gentle, super subtle and soft contouring going there. Now I think I'm going to add a little bit of my luminous one and this is in the shade Seaside Shimmer. And as I look at my finger, like I can see a little bit of a satiny finish here. It's nothing huge, but we're going to add some of this to the forehead. We're going to add some of this almost a little bit higher, a little bit more in a blush placement practically there. And I'm just going to buff that in as well. It blends easily. I really think with the right application tools, a nice little dense brush, I don't think you're going to have any trouble blending that into the skin. I'm now seeing a little more luminosity across the forehead, but definitely not over the top. And then we'll blend this here on the cheeks. Trying to wear it a little bit more in traditional bronzer placement. All right, skin's looking a little more sunny. And a thing I kind of like about the putty face products, you can now touch your skin and, you know, we set with powder. This did not struggle to blend in on top of the powder and it also doesn't feel super sticky now that I've put it on. Next up, we're gonna do some blush. I have the putty blush here. I'm gonna use the shade Fiji today, a really pretty reddish color. And then I also have a luminous putty blush in Maui. This is much softer and I thought maybe these might be pretty just layered up a little bit. Bit, and I'm going to continue to use my putty uh, primer applicator. For a little more subtle, like diffused look on the skin, I'm going to go straight in like this and I can just see that product gently picking up there on my brush and look how pretty this is. This is giving like NARS Exhibit A. That's a really pretty reddish powder blush and this is giving a super similar look on the cheeks, but maybe a, even a little easier to control, actually. So I'm just kind of rocking the brush back and forth there on the product, and I'm covering the cheek. Oh, I love that. Oh, I should have been using this more. I have a nice collection of putty blushes, but I don't always go for them for whatever reason. I don't know why. This process couldn't be easier. I'm just rolling the brush in and then stamping it on. And the reason why I didn't go that route with my bronzers is because that honey drip shade, I really wanted to get more out of it. So I took some swatches of it basically off my finger and placed them on the skin and then blended out. I wanted to maximize what was showing up on my skin from that. Here I'm knowing, okay, this is really bright. I can just roll in and then slowly build if you want to. 
I'm adding just a little bit more. Hi, kitten. It was so funny how sleepy the kittens were yesterday morning. It was the morning after the 4th. Like, they were just tired from their night of staying up and continuing to hear fireworks after the technical fireworks were over. You know how people get. I think I've stamped my cheek out enough. Now let's add a little bit of the Luminous Putty Blush. This is a pretty shade in its own right, but I just thought it might be nice um, layering up. You can really see the sheen in this. Again, this is the color called Maui, right? Yeah, Maui. I don't know if you can tell on my finger there just how much glow and gleam this has. It's really pretty. The other one was just a straight up cream color, but I'm gonna roll my brush in that and see if we can stamp a little bit of this over top. Ooh, I'm seeing a little like kind of peachy glow come through on the apple of the cheek there. You're not seeing what this does purely on its own. Obviously I'm layering, but it's adding some pretty additional color and shine. I don't think I'm going to need a highlighter. I'm just taking what's left on this and kind of dabbing over. I know I got kind of close to my under eye with a couple of those steps, but here we are with the complexion. I think it's looking so good. I think these various putty steps actually layered up on the skin really nicely. Uh, at one point I was thinking like, if I use all putty, is it eventually just going to start to feel a little thick or like I've really got a lot on the skin, but I don't think it does at all. None of this stuff is creating any sort of problematic texture on my skin. It feels smooth and consistent and nothing looks at all patchy. So I'm going to continue on with the rest of my makeup and then we'll come back and wrap up our putty discussion. Alrighty guys, so here is my finished look. I'm trying to think what else happened with the face. I did brows. Um, what's that little bare spot in that brow? Sorry, sometimes I only see it from a distance. Like when I'm looking into the little camera screen. I did my brows. I put on Milani eyeshadow primer. I have been so consumed by the smoking hot palette lately. Like if I'm not on purpose trying something else, I'm wanting to go back to this. I've loved it so much. So I've got that on my lids. CoverGirl Exhibitionist Stretch and Strengthen is my mascara. And if you're wondering about that lip, I tell you, the most beautiful soft matte lip, take a putty blush. This is Fiji, okay? This is the same one we sheared out on the cheeks and I just put it on the lips. Mmm, I love that. Why have I not been doing that? So overall, how are we feeling about the putty things? The main focus for me today was the color correcting eye brightener, and I was very impressed by this. I mean, this is definitely the closest thing I have tried to the Becca and Smashbox brightener. I feel like that one might be just a hair more potent on the coverage, but when you push into this, when you kind of break that seal of the cream, and you're not just getting that thin glaze, but you're actually getting a little bit of thickness out of it. The way that blends in is really impressive and it definitely is brightening. The problem I've so often run into and even like I love the Pixie Correction Concentrate and Brightening Peach. That's a great product but nothing has been quite as creamy as this and I think that's really important if you're going to go in and layer another concealer on top. This needs to be fairly emollient. So I love the amount of moisture content that's actually in here. I didn't feel like I loaded myself up big time but we kind of went dot 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 with with it and that was plenty to brighten and then we took hydrating camo concealer on top and I was very pleased with the look. Setting it is what's going to I think add to the flawlessness of everything because it's just going to take that dewiness and kind of even it out. Also another little finishing touch step that I like to do is take my Kosas Cloud Set and kind of go over this whole area, the seam between blush and under eye, and also hit T-zone. I feel like it always just kind of helps things a little bit. Um, but outside of that, we know that there's also a liquid poreless putty primer now, which I used uh, just a couple videos ago, where I was talking about new e.l.f. things. Which one do I like better? The liquid one has continued to do well for me, and I would have to say it's easier to smooth onto the skin. Frankly, I think the putty concept makes most sense in terms of applying to a small area of the skin like your blush or your under eye or bronzer or whatever. Taking a product all over the face, to me it just makes more sense for it to be more smooth and creamy. So I would lean toward their newer liquid putty primer option where that's concerned. But I actually really love this putty blush in Fiji. There are so many fun shades. There's a really pretty cool pink in this line that I like as well. I think it's definitely something worth experimenting with. And then also double it up on the lips. Why not? I mean it just looks like a soft matte kind of pillowy lip and you're immediately coordinated with the tone on your cheeks. So outside of that under eye brightener, 
I really like this. Um, the Luminous version is fun as well. And maybe it was just my application style, but I was a lot more impressed with Honey Drip than I was the first time I used it. It is soft and subtle on me, but I could still definitely see the effect. The shimmer version of that probably is a little more colorful on my skin, and I thought that gave a pretty effect too. But I think my favorite things in this video, the under eye corrector and the putty blush, those are my faves. And just looking up on my under eye area right now, like they look identical. I wouldn't know that I have a totally different corrector on one side compared to the other. So I'd say this is a pretty good news moment here. Really pleased with the result. Let me know if you've tried Elf's new corrector or any of these other putty products. What do you like? What do you not like? Let us all know in the comments section and I will see you guys again very soon. I love you. Bye.